Hey, come inside. We're gonna interview Amla Marth. Okay, Johan. Yes. First question is for you. All right. Your first album came out in 1998, but the band formed in 1992. Did you ever imagine you will still be around after all these years and become one of the biggest names in metal? I don't think we ever thought about it in that way. No? Yeah, yeah. we always looked uh, like one step ahead. Uh, trying to build a band, make it bigger, and see how far it could take us. So I don't, I don't think that would, we had a goal to get here, per se, even if it maybe was a dream. Ulavi. Nailed. Aside from drummers, the lineup has stayed the same since your first album. What's the secret to working together successfully for so many years? I think uh, perhaps uh, that we can uh, work well together, I would say, and uh, we stayed friends. I think most bands, uh, when they split, there's money issues. Some people get more than others in the band, or you try to have the same girlfriend, or you know, that's usually the, the, the stuff that's going to break a band. But we never had that kind of issues. We kind of equally split all the money. Doesn't matter who writes or do what. And, uh, you know, we all had our girlfriends that we didn't have to share. So now, but so yeah, I think that's, uh, and also, you know, I think uh, we're a good working, uh, working team. Johan, questions for you. Fate of Norse was the album that allowed you to go full-time musicians. Before that, after long tours, did you ever think, did you ever think, I can't keep doing this, it's too much? Yeah, it was pretty much like that. It was like the, right on the edge for like, we cannot combine the band and a, a normal day job at the same time because it was too much gigs. We could not take this much time off from our regular jobs all the time. So we had to just sit down the whole band and one day we decided tomorrow we're gonna go to our normal day jobs, just tell them we're gonna quit. And then we'll see if it works or not, you know. Ted, questions for you. Do you think that the success of TV series like Vikings or movies like The Northman have, uh, has benefits the band in any way? Maybe a little bit. I mean, it's, it's, it's not so much the music, maybe the people, but people get aware of the the Viking culture and Viking history, which makes it easier for us to to reach out to a bigger crowd. So I think both the TV series Vikings and also the Marvel universe with Thor, and okay. stuff like that. Of course, it, it will uh, benefit us in, in some way in the end. Ulavi, over the years, your music has evolved with more heavy metal influences, but your lyrics has always focused on Viking themes. Have you ever considered exploring different topics at any points in your career? Nah, not really. I think uh, we found our niche and there's no reason for us to do anything else. And I also think that the fans are going to be disappointed if we suddenly start writing songs about Aztecs or the Greek or, or even modern stuff. Yeah. So yeah, I think uh, we're stuck here and we're kind of happy to be stuck here <laughs> as well. We're locked in and we, we like it that way. This is a question for you too. The guitarist. Since the first album, the band has always had a distinctive sound. Who were your idols that shaped your guitar playing? Well, when I started, it was James Hetfield and Metallica. But then, it, I mean, my biggest band my whole life has been Iron Maiden, with those uh, melodies and you know harmonized melodies. So I think that's where we draw the biggest inspiration. I think. Okay. What about you? Uh, Ace Freely is the reason I okay. play guitar. Kiss. And uh, I don't know, maybe Randy Rhodes uh, as a songwriter, Jeff Hanneman. Questions for, for all the band. Is there an album in your career that you're not proud of? If so, which one and why? I think they're all good for, for what it is. And I think uh, after every record you kind of feel, or you, you kind of notice stuff that you would have done differently later on. And I think that's just uh, the way that, things are you know nothing is you know if it's already perfect when you do it there's no really point to continue and yeah. I think what we do is kind of we learn from songs that had potential but didn't really come out the way we wanted to or hoped we kind of learn from there and then try to make 
different next time. Nice. But I, I think, I mean, yeah, there's obviously weak albums or weaker albums. But uh, what I think is weaker album, maybe a fan that's going to be the fan's favorite album. So I think it's stupid to to say what I think <laughs> yeah. in that sense. It's not, it's not sense, uh, yeah. It's not less weak, it's less strong. No, a question for you. Okay. You played in a lot of black metal bands in the past. Did you feel any pressure transitioning from playing for a relatively underground audience to performing a massive concert around the world? Uh, yeah, of course. It has to be more perfect every time. <laughs> you can't be as sloppy because, you know, when, when you play, in my opinion, when you play that kind of level where I was, uh, it didn't have to be perfect. You just live the black metal underground life. You know, you drank, you played and had fun. But now, of course, people play, pay more to see you and you have to perform a lot better, of course. Of sense. So, so yes, there was a lot of pressure. Did you expect it to enter in the band after the first tour that you guys did together? You were at the session. If, uh, yeah, it was a session at first. Uh, but uh, I think I took it as an opportunity to, you know, show myself and... and uh, and yeah, apparently I did a good job. <laughs> Nowadays, bands can go viral on the internet without even playing a live show, and algorithms often seem more crucial than the quality of music. As a band that started before the internet, how do you feel about the current music industry compared to the way it was before? I feel sorry for new bands, I have to say. <laughs> because <laughs> I like the old school way of you go out there, play shows, and that's how you build a band, not the fucking algorithm that picks your band and puts in a playlist. I think that's fucking bullshit, seriously. <laughs> the same for you guys? Yeah, a little bit like that. But I mean, I, I, uh, I kind of like, uh, it will always change, like, times changes and uh, the way you listen to mu music changes. And I think it's just, the, there's good and bad with every, every new way that the things work. So, I mean, you could either just go, go with the flow and then try to do your best, or you could sit there and, and and be sad. I don't know. Just like uh, it is what it is. Maybe the past was better, but some people are gonna benefit from the from this new time too. So it's it's a it's a good. Understand. It's the same for you since you are the youngest. Uh, I mean, I, I think I, I agree with Sunny a lot, but I still think it's a good opportunity for unknown bands to be in different playlists and get the exposure. Of course, because it's harder nowadays to, to, uh, yeah, become a bigger band, I guess. So it's so many more bands nowadays. So yeah. it's, it's really tricky to to reach out. So we're saturated, to, maybe. Yeah, exactly. So it's really hard to stand out. So it's it's a tougher time for new bands, definitely. Satan. <laughs> <laughs>